Hey guys, it's LEGO Boys E3. Today I'm going to show you how I made this 3x5x5 mod. So I just finished making my second ever cuboid puzzle, the 3x5x5, out of a Shangxiao 5x5. It turned out pretty well, and today I'm going to show you how I made it. So the first thing I did is I just took some of the stickers off. I didn't take them all off because some of them I'd just be cutting off later. But for now, I just took this row off, and then I started gluing the pieces together. So of course, if you're turning a 5x5 into a 3x5x5, you need to bandage some of the pieces together. So I just got some super glue on the outside of the cube and just glued the pieces together. Of course, just gluing the tops of the pieces together doesn't really do a whole lot. So later on, after I had disassembled the puzzle, I also glued together all the pieces at the core just to make sure that they would stay together. But then I got out a saw and I cut off basically the top half row of cubies. And so you can see here I just cut half into the piece until all the cubies had fallen off like this. And also since the sides of those pieces all have caps on them, I went ahead and super glued in all those caps so that they wouldn't fall out uh, while the cube was still assembled. Now the center pieces of this 5x5 have to be modified a little bit, just so that the screw doesn't stick up too much. By default, the screw would stick way above the fully sanded center piece, so what you actually have to do is go in and take the center piece. What I actually did is got a Dremel and just stuck it straight inside the hole, just to make that little lip that the screw sits on a little bit deeper so that it could go in a little bit further. And then I got a Dremel with the screw, and I actually just sanded down all the edges of the screw so that it would be a lot thinner than it originally was. And then after some sanding of the screw, I was able to to put that back in and the screw went in a lot deeper which allows for a lot more sanding on that face. And speaking of sanding, I then got out the belt sander and just started sanding away at all the pieces. Pretty much you just have to get it so that the surface of it is curved. Down to the point where at the center where the screw is, the screw is just barely at the surface of the piece and down at the edges where the other faces of the cube are, you basically have the width of one cubie instead of having the width of two cubies originally. So I just kept sanding and sanding. Once I got closer to the final shape, I started turning the sides before I would put it down on the belt sander just to make sure that all the faces were uniform and everything was even compared to each other. And I just got it down into this final shape. Now after disassembling the puzzle, I mixed up some milli put and just started filling in all the holes that needed to be filled. And so on the surface of most of the pieces, that we cut down, you had to fill in the big hole that's left over from sanding. So that's pretty easy, you pretty much just fill the hole, but you also have to fill the little cracks inside of the pieces. So of course, because you glued two pieces together, there are now cracks in between those two, and that needs to be filled, so that is one uniform piece all the way around. So basically I just rolled up the epoxy sculpt and stuck a little line of it in between the two pieces, and then flattened that down, and that piece was filled. After repeating that with all of these pieces, then letting them dry, you then have to go in and sand down the interfaces of the pieces, the parts that rub against each other because of course the cube couldn't turn if you didn't do this. So basically on the inner part of all those pieces you have to sand down the stuff that's sticking out until you get a nice flat surface like this. So then after reassembling the puzzle with all the pieces filled I then began my final sanding of all the pieces just kind of doing it by hand. If you're wondering why there's red tape over these center pieces, that's because they're incredibly thin, like probably less than a millimeter thin at the middle. That's basically what happens if you sand them down too much at the beginning. And so basically I just didn't want to sand them down anymore because at that point they would probably just fall apart. I then got a slightly higher grit sandpaper and sanded down the entire thing, including smoothing out some of those sharp edges. I took the remaining stickers off the puzzle and then proceeded to disassemble it for the final time. And so basically this is the worst part of making a mod now. You have to go in for every single piece and sand down all the surfaces of it. You have to sand down all the edges, make them all smooth, uh, sand down the inner parts of it, make sure that it will all turn right without catching on itself, all that kind of stuff, and then just make the whole thing smooth at the end with a really high grit sandpaper. And so yeah, do that with all the pieces. And then you finally, you can reassemble it one last time. I then took it outside and spray painted those sanded faces black. And then I began the stickering. So stickering a puzzle like this is very simple yet time consuming. So basically for the outer four faces on this puzzle, all the pieces are just like a five by five. So I could just sticker those up just like normal. But for the rest of the pieces that were weirdly shaped, Pretty much you just have to go one at a time, use a knife, cut out a sticker of the appropriate size, round down the corners, do everything you need to do to make it fit, and then stick it on the puzzle. And then at this point, you're pretty much done. So this is my final 3x5x5 mod. It looks pretty good, it turns pretty well, pops occasionally, but for the most part, it is pretty cool. You can see me scrambling it up here, of course, first doing 180 degree turns on all the outer faces so that you can scramble it fully as a cuboid later on. So yeah, I like how this turned out. The only thing is that I sanded down the center pieces a lot more than I think you're supposed to. I looked up other pictures and videos of 3x5x5s and like the inner pieces, not the very center piece, but the inner pieces were way bigger than they were on mine. 
So yeah, I just cut down mine a lot, and that made the center very thin and probably easy to break. So let's just hope it doesn't break, but for now, it looks pretty cool, all scrambled up. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I have for this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!